While the U.S. has gone down the route of stealth with the F-A-22, Britain and its European partners have gone for super maneuverability while creating their own advanced strike plane, the Eurofighter Typhoon. It can cruise at supersonic speeds, carry out complex maneuvers at high g-forces, and has the most sophisticated pilot interface ever created. My name is Craig Penrice. I'm the Eurofighter Typhoon project pilot. Craig Penrice is stationed at Preston Air Base in England, where he has been flight testing the Eurofighter. It's every fighter pilot's dream. Uh, I know that sounds very corny, but it's true. Uh, cockpit that shows you, tells you everything that's happening in the world around you to allow you to be tactical. Thrust and maneuverability, carefree handling, all put together make it you know, a wondrous joy, fantastic airplane to fly. Many fighters like the F-15 and F-16 have been highly maneuverable, but only at subsonic speeds. What sets the Eurofighter apart is that it can pull off these kinds of moves while flying supersonic. When you aggressively maneuver this airplane, uh, the roll rates that you generate are, are, are quite frankly startling. It, it really feels like you're on the outside of a washing machine being spun around. The, the roll rates will leave your head pinned to one side of the canopy if you're not careful. With airplanes capable of 9G, nine times the force of gravity, this is a fairly tight turn in anybody's language. 9G is sort of currently recognized to be sort of physiologically a limiting factor. The F-15 and F-16 are also capable of pulling 9Gs, but only for a second or two. The Eurofighter is different. It can fly at 9Gs for extended periods, but in order for the pilots to stay conscious, they must wear a specially designed Typhoon G-suit. One of the drawbacks of all this agility and all this G is that it does weird things to your body. So through the years we've developed various G protection systems. But with Eurofighter being that much more of a high G airplane, we obviously have to you know, give the pilot the best chance of, of not losing consciousness. So in addition to G trousers, we have uh, inflatable boots in here. We connect the, the, the G suit trouser uh, connection here into the, into the boot. That allows the air to be forced down into bladders that are in the, the boot. They inflate, squeeze my foot, and uh, just further increase the coverage of this G protection device. A matching pair. And zipping up, slightly unique, going from top to bottom, so that the zip doesn't slip down under the forces of gravity. It's already down there, keeping me in there. Uh, flying helmet, uh, providing impact protection. Uh, crash helmet. Providing uh, communications. We take this airplane to places that without this equipment you just simply wouldn't survive. This suit can keep the pilot alert and conscious while pulling 9Gs almost indefinitely, crucial when engaging the enemy at 12,000 meters. The Eurofighter is a lethal killing machine and can carry up to 10 air to air missiles, air to surface missiles, and anti tank bombs. The targeting systems for these weapons appear on a head-up display or inside the pilot's visor so they can aim and fire them without ever having to look down. When you're in a dogfight with somebody, you really don't want to take your eyes off the guy you're fighting because he can do something while you're not looking. So uh, many, many fights have been lost in the past where somebody's looked inside the cockpit to check his height or his speed or his fuel and looked back outside and lo and behold, the bad guy's disappeared. We don't need to do that with our helmet. We can keep our eyes locked onto the bad guy and have enough immediate field of view, all the information we need. Yeah, it's a huge, huge tactical advantage. The Eurofighter's two engines generate a combined thrust of about 40,000 pounds pushing it to a top speed of 2,125 kilometers per hour, just below twice the speed of sound. When you let the brakes off on the runway with full power, you're accelerating at 30 knots per second. That's about 35, 36 miles per hour every second. So that's zero to 100 in car speak in three seconds. Uh, that's quite frankly uh, stunning. You're pinned to the seat when you're going off. 
and it also means that you can be at 40,000 feet within a minute of takeoff uh, and only five miles down the road from the, the runway that you took off from. Uh, it's rocket ship uh, territory there, really. This staggering acceleration gets the pilots of the fight fast. Translated into a fighting situation, basically for air to air, the plane that gets the highest, the quickest and fastest is going to have the best uh, first shoot opportunity. So the higher I am and the faster I am, the greater range any given missile will have when it leaves my airplane. So I want to get as high and as fast as I can, as quick as I can. That's where uh, excess thrust is always a bonus. Sight is life and speed is groovy. You can't fight what you can't see and you haven't got speed, you aren't going to defeat him either. The plane's afterburners can effortlessly push the plane through the sound barrier. Supersonic's just a number. Nothing happens. The, the controls don't reverse. It doesn't go all blurred. It doesn't shake. It just very smoothly slips through the speed of sound. No more change in sound, no change in feel of the airplane. Uh, but you get there very, very quickly. We can uh, accelerate to, uh, from subsonic to supersonic in, in a heartbeat. Like the FA-22, the Eurofighter can maintain supersonic flight without its afterburners on using supercruise, which not only saves fuel, but reduces the infrared signature of the plane, making it less susceptible to anti-aircraft fire. The Eurofighter is not stealthy. It has no need to be. It can fly its entire mission supersonically, and it is designed to fight its battles from a distance. No self-respecting fighter pilot in a real engagement wants to get into a dogfight but it's an area that you must be prepared to go into if needs must. Real fighter pilot wants to be up there, get as high and as fast as he can, shoot first and run away bravely and home for team medals. But there will be situations where a close identity or getting into a dogfight is required. So as well as the performance to get high and fast, you also have to have the ability to maneuver in a close-in dogfight. Like other modern strike planes, the Eurofighter has an inherently unstable design. It is built with a triangle-shaped delta wing and two small canards on the front. To turn 20,000 kilograms of unstable metal into an agile fighter requires three massive computers, which control the plane using a revolutionary software system called Carefree Handling. Carefree Handling in the airplane simply means that I don't have a care in the world when it comes to maneuvering my airplane. The flight control computers are constantly looking at what speed height I've got and will limit their response appropriate to the state the airplane's in. So I don't have to worry about exceeding any limit, the airplane will look after me. You simply point the airplane where you want it to go and let go of the stick and it will continue to go in there forever and a day. If you put all the things together, such as carefree handling, the thrust of the engines and the performance of the airplane, you take so much of the workload away from the pilot and he simply just has to maneuver in relation to the other airplane. You don't have to worry about the limits, you don't have to worry about anything else, you just get on and, and fight the fight. The Eurofighter is the ultimate strike plane. Fast, maneuverable and deadly. It is the pinnacle of a development process that started with the F-15 some 30 years ago. The F-15 and other contemporary fighters that I've been lucky enough to fly are all very, very good airplanes. Uh, but anybody climbing into this airplane will be able to feel and experience a distinct advantage over any of these contemporary airplanes.